you are welcome you are welcome to this moment of inspiration in the next 15 minutes i'll be talking about the 10 pathway principles of cultivating a healthy relationship either it is platonic relationship or it is emotional relationship i want you to understand that the first criteria that you need to consider before cultivating friendship or relationship with anyone it's common ground the first point is common ground i see people having aimless relationship relationship with people that have nothing to do with their dreams have nothing to do with their direction in life has nothing to do with their dream with what god has called them to do and with what god is doing in their life so because she's beautiful or he's handsome or because he has the money or because he's the available person to date you right now does it mean that he or she is perfect for you or because you feel so alone and he or she is the only person available so you give your attention to cultivate a relationship with this individual because of that no no this is something that shouldn't be done the first spot place for cultivating any kind of relationship is common ground there must be common ground in the place of your belief there must be common ground in the place of your intellectual capacity in the place of your thinking pattern there must be a common ground of interest in life there must be a common ground of passion and curiosity There must be a common ground. There must be something that you are interested in doing that agrees with what this person is interested in doing in the area of dreams, in the area of life assignment, in the area of your calling. It's very important. In the area of activities, either compatibility or complementary, there must be a common ground. These are attitudes that need to be cultivated. Second, sharing sharing if you want to be healthy person for a healthy relationship you must learn to share any kind of relationship where both parties do not share with each other things that they know and understand it's going to be a problem do you share your ideas together do you share your knowledge together do you share your strength together Are you the only one giving in this relationship? Or this person is also giving to you? How have you shared the wisdom, the knowledge you have with this person to help this person to become who God wants this person to be? It matters. Do you have the ability to share? Are you greedy? Or you're this type that extends to this person in a relationship with the same thing Christ has extended to you? Sharing matters. Sharing your idea, your opinion, sharing your fears, sharing your worries, sharing your doubts, having it as a conversation with the aim of getting clarity and how both of you can find the way forward is very important. The third is help, helping capacity. Every individual you are in a relationship with, you must be able to be helpful. You must be able to show help, extend help to this person. And this person also needs to extend help to you too. A relationship where one person is the only one helping the another person or there is nobody helping anybody at all is going to be frustrating. The quality of you being helpful to this person will determine how this person will actually take your relationship with them serious. Fourth, support. Any healthy relationship or any healthy person should have the mindset of supporting people. It's important. How supportive have you been? Are you the type that kind of find faults in people? You are the commentator, the supervisor. You know what is going wrong and what is going right, but you're never putting in any effort. You're not putting in any effort at all to make the situation better. You are not praying you're not advising, you're not encouraging. Why? 
Why? Every relationship should be built on mutual support. Very important. Very important. And, and relationship also should be based on growth. Every healthy person and healthy relationship should have some attributes of growth. Growing in a godly way. Growing in the knowledge of Christ. Growing in the knowledge of who you are in Christ. Growing in the knowledge of your dreams. Growing in the knowledge of your vision. Growing in the, no, in the, in the knowledge of your capacity. Of every dream God has embedded in your heart. So, is there a ground for mutual growth? Is this person concerned about your inability to grow? Is this person concerned about your frustration that comes with you not being able to grow in the place of your career, your dream, or your vision, whatever it is God has committed into your hands? You should be able to grow. Grow in godly characters. Grow in a healthy thinking pattern. It's very important. If this person is not growing, if you are not growing, then something is wrong in the in the relationship. Relationship should help your relationship with this person should help you to grow. And it should also help this other person to grow too. Mutual growth is very important. Any healthy relationship should be able to inspire you to be the best. It's okay to appreciate people and celebrate people, but I also want you to have it at the back of your mind that, hey, there should be some inspiration. There's no arrival mentality here. You don't idolize the person. Thank God for what this person was before you met this person, but how are you inspiring, how are you inspiring this person to be better than the way you met them? It matters a lot. You can't just sit and just fold your hands just like that. It matters. It matters. It's, it's, it's a very powerful, it's a very, very powerful reality. The ability to inspire. If this person is not inspiring you, then this is the person you should not build a relationship with. And if you're not inspiring this person, then you are the worst person this person should be with. There are no two ways about it. No two ways about it. Any healthy relationship should be able to help you to improve. Yes, to improve. Thank God for your strength, but there is room to grow. There is room to... There is room to grow. There is room to grow. There is room to grow. There are not always about it. There are rooms to grow. So... How have your life improved this person? How has this person's relationship with you improved you in what God has called you to be, especially in the area of your weaknesses, in the area of your flaws and mistakes? How has this relationship helped you improved? It's very important. These are the criteria that you use to guide yourself and use to nurture yourself in the place of relationship. Another thing I needed to have it out of back of my mind is that every healthy relationship should give consign and focus to your life assignment. Are you both individuals that are confused about what the future holds or you are both aware of the assignment in your individual hands? Inability to know your life assignment is the greatest risk in any kind of relationship because it will expose you to the place of abuse. And there is nothing you can do about it. It will expose you to the place of abuse. Oh yes, it will. It will expose you to the place of abuse. So, this point is even one of the major reasons why relationship is needed. Because any relationship that is not feeding your life assignment is a relationship that should not even be in the first place. It's a relationship that should not be in the first place. So I want to encourage you to embrace the truth of God's word. It's very important. The relationship should not be a distraction. 
to your life assignment. It should be what contributes strength, life, to your relationship. Your relationship with this person should contribute life and strength. This person's relationship with you should communicate life and strength. It's very important. And every relationship should give both of you rooms to participate in each other's dream. Which means, <laughs> a dreamless individual is not qualified for relationship. That's just the truth. It's not qualified for relationship. If you don't have a dream, you don't have a clarity of where you're going to in life and in destiny. You have no business to do with relationship. Because relationship is for the... For two people understanding each other to see how they can partner with each other in the place of their dreams. So participation is needed. How is this person involved in your frustrations, in your pains, in your in your challenges? How is this person involved in the place of advice or in the place of providing encouragement, strength, idea, finances? Whatever that is within their capacity to use in participation. Does is this person just an observe just an observe or observing personnel like a spectator they don't care they don't want to be involved if that's the case then there's a problem you should be interested to participate in this person's world and this person should be able to participate in your world it's very important in the place of your dreams your fears your worries your doubts your struggles your pains your regrets is very important. It's very important. And the next is protection. Your relationship with this person should be able to protect your dream. It should be able to protect your feelings. It should be able to protect your values. It should be able to protect your strength. It should be able to protect your priorities. It should be able to protect your needs. Very, very important. So, how are you protecting this person's values, priorities, needs? How is this person protecting yours? It's very important. I am not saying that this is a quick fix reality, but it's something you grow into. Let it be a common ground. And when there's a common ground, be willing to share with each other, to benefit from each other. Be ready to help each other. Be ready to support each other. Be ready to grow together. Be ready to inspire each other. Be ready to improve each other. Be ready to embrace your life assignment and make sure that the sustainability and the safety of your life assignment is, is, is highly upheld. Very important. And that's not it alone. You must be ready to participate in each other's world. You must be ready to participate in each other's world. There are no two ways about it. And most of all, you should be able to protect each other, protect your relationship. Avoid exposing the privacy of your relationship with people. Either you're a man or you're a lady, please stop talking about your relationship with your friends. Stop talking about your relationship with your friends. Because friends, most of the times, are the one that gives, makes you to give attention to something that shouldn't even be observed at all. I want to say that relationship is not an occupation. If you need money, get a job. Relationship is not a lifeline for survival. If you're looking for food to eat, a man that will foot your, your bills in terms of eating, foot your bills in terms of schools, foot your bills in terms of accommodation, please, relationship is not a ground for that. Relationship does not exclude you from becoming responsible for yourself. Because whatever anybody do with you and for you in a relationship is a privilege, is a support. This is the voice of Prince Victor Matthew. And I hope you have gotten value for your time. It takes a responsible person to cultivate a healthy relationship. God bless you. I celebrate you all and I commit you into the hands of a living God to help you, to strengthen you, to be everything he wants you to be.